All right, so I'm back in my delay effector setup that I've made in Chops, and I wanted to do a little bit of revising with this. I want to talk about um, a couple things that I found after I posted my last video to continue to speed this up and to make it more flexible. So I'm going to uh, start sort of where I left off in my last video. I'll explain very quickly what I've got and then um, sort of explain where I went wrong in making, uh, making that setup. And then I'll show you how to make a, a more efficient one. All right, to recap the last video for anybody who hasn't seen that one, what I've done is I've got um, packed geometry and I am applying a uh, mops fall off to that. I really like using mops tool set. It's, it's really great for uh, setups like this where you need to control a lot of pieces or elements with, uh, with a fall off. So in, in this setup, I have my shape fall off feeding directly into my uh, my mops transform and the the animation isn't looking so great and what I was after was this sort of uh, bouncy motion and that looks really good how I got there was after the transformations uh, I applied this chops setup uh, which is really simple it's just a, a spring chop applied to the position which is divided into three uh, discrete channels and also the orientation which this this takes care of rotation and that's one attribute across four channels and then back in sops i uh, i bring these in uh, at, through the channel sop and then to get the actually to get the uh the rotations to to actually be applied not just as a as a modified attribute but to transform the packed geometry we had to use this other um mops node this mops apply attributes um, and so at the end of my last tutorial, I was like, well, or af actually after I had it posted, I said, well, let me actually go back and revise this so I can um, uh, do this jiggle or this spring effect on the scale as well. And what I found was, okay, well, now I have to come back in. I have to bring in my P scale attribute. And then I started thinking, well, what if, what if I wanted to do the color? And then I was like, okay, now I've got to bring in another attribute. And before you know it, you've got thousands upon thousands of channels because I have a ton of pieces here. I've got, I think this is around 25, 2800 pieces. Uh, some of these attributes, like if it's a vector attribute position, it's going to give you three channels per piece. So right there, we've already got, you know, around 9,000 channels. And so Chops is going to, to sort of start slowing down and you're going to have some, uh, some performance issues. So well, I started rethinking this setup and originally what I wanted to do when I when I first started thinking about how to uh, to build this delay my first idea was not to apply this spring that spring chop setup to each uh, attribute independently what I wanted to do was apply that to the mops fall off attribute and then have all of the transforms or any of the uh, modifiers sort of inherit that spring motion and that is a sound idea but I goofed myself up by ticking on this ignore zero fall off prims and I'm going to show you um, how that goofed me up and, and this isn't on by default that is actually off by default it can save some time uh, if you have a if you have tons and tons of pieces which is, I was really interested in saving time on it but what that did was um, when any time that, that my fall off uh, dipped to zero or below zero it didn't apply any transforms and I'm going to show you why that was problematic. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just bring this over here and let's just look at my fall off. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a, I'm going to build another uh, chop setup. And just by way of saying this, I, I'm packaging all of this up into an HDA, which I'm going to release on Gumroad. Uh, I suggest a small amount, but you can pay whatever you want for it. So, or if you don't even want to to get it off Gumroad, just follow these instructions and build your own because it is it is very simple. So I'm going to drop a null here. Um, this will be what I reference our um, our fall off to get this into into chops. So I'm just going to call this chops. I'm going to hop into my chop network and I'm going to drop down a geometry. I'm going to point this to the null that we just created. And it was called chops bring this in as an animated piece of geometry and my attribute scope rather rather than being the position or orientation any of those uh, transformation attributes I'm going to bring in the mops mops 
fall off attribute, and I'm going to rename that to mops fall off as the channel that I'm going to be processing. I'm going to drop down a null chop to reference that on the on, on the output side. And I'm just going to call it out. And let me just pull up a motion effects view so we can see what's happening. So again, we have lots of channels here. Um, the quick tip that I showed last time to, to reduce the overhead of your um, motion effects view, because really this this is, in, in my experience, this is the, the huge hit that you take in chops is um, looking at thousands of channels or attempting to. So let's use this X to turn everything off and then we're just going to randomly select one so we can see our uh, the the cur the channel representation of our mops fall off attribute. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a spring to it just as in the last video. And immediately you can see that um, you can see why my zero or let, let me apply this and you can see why disabling this zero um, the zero fall off prims goof this up. Uh, so to get right now, SOPS doesn't know what's going on in chops. So to get that in, to get this, these new, excuse me, to get these new curves into our uh, our SOP network and to apply them, we just need to reference this chop net and reference what node inside of chops. We need to set it to animated because that's what we took in and we need to bring in our, uh, need to tell it what channel we're referencing, which is our mops fall off and uh, tell it what attribute you want to apply those channels to mops fall off and everything should be happy. Let's, ch let's check out our scene view. Now what we're going to do now, I've just copied this, uh, this transform modifier. But what you should see is, are we are we getting, yeah, we're definitely getting our springiness because that's our animation without the without our spring, and now with it, we're getting this. So it's it's a very bouncy, it's a very bouncy uh, setup with the with the default settings from the spring. But and and again, I, since I just copied this, you can see what happens when I leave that zero fall off. Prim uh, option checked. I'm just going to pull up a geometry spreadsheet so you can see it even a little bit better. Um, anytime my mops fall off, look, you know, again because of uh, this type of curve, we're dipping below zero about half the time. But because because this option is ticked right here, um, that motion is getting clamped out, and that's not what we want. But if we leave this off then we get the kind of motion that I was after at the beginning, but I just uh, sort of mistakenly uh, prevented myself from seeing by having that on. So that's the that's the basic setup. Let me just dive in here very quickly and pull some of this stuff down. I'm going to turn my dampening constant up to maybe around there. Let's take a look at what that does in our motion effects view. And that's going to be very, that's going to be a lot closer to what we're what we're looking for. Let me minimize this too, since we don't need to see that. And now that's a much nicer motion. Okay, and we can I can take my mass up. Sometimes when you increase the mass, let me go up to like 1.5. Oops, it makes it feel like this is a much heavier object, and the like the pieces tend to move slower. Yeah, so that's the that that's really all you need to know about what I've done to revise this setup is um, same same setup but rather than processing each individual uh, parameter in chops I just process the mops fall off and then anything that you apply afterwards uh, it inherits that that springiness uh, all for the sake of showing this I'm going to drop down a mops color I think this is worth talking about um, now, this is not what you would expect, right? Uh, because all of these, in, in this particular setup, all of these are packed fragments. Up here in my assemble sub, I have uh, packed fragments. Um, to see the color, you will need to unpack your geometry and also transfer that color attribute. 
So this is just an unpack SOP. And then what we need to transfer is the, our color. And now you'll see that we've gotten, um, without really doing anything uh, other than just unpacking and grabbing, grabbing our color, we've got that lagged springy color information too. And that's going to, that's going to be applied for, for anything that we do. Um, let me hop back up to the transform. If you wanted to do that to scale, uh, you'll get that for free as well. And this is much more similar to what we were kind of going after. And um, this is what I was, this is more similar to what I was going after to begin with. I just, for whatever reason, as I was building it, I, took one step in a wrong direction and uh, just kept going down that path for a little bit too long. But luckily it was easy enough to come back to and revise. And it gave me uh, it gave me an opportunity to uh, think more about what was going on and try to refine the setup a little bit. It also gave me a chance to um, build this out into an HDA. I'll show you that. Uh, it's just called JH Delay. JH is me, that's Jason Harmon. Hop in here, it's all the same, exact same setup. Um, we have the attributes, or we have the parameters here. You can define whatever attribute you want this uh, the spring to be applied to, and then I've got a um, a filter effect to sort of blur that out a little bit. You can turn that on or off, and these are just the spring uh, controls. I thought it'd be worth showing um, just what a what it would look like to use the HDA uh, that I've created. So. Here I've just got my, my animated torus. Let's drop down the JH delay. You can see all of the all of the defaults are are set to work in the context of mops, are set, set to work best in the context of a mops setup. Um, let me drop down a transform, a mops transform. Once we've got a, a transform modifier down, we'll just adjust some of the parameters. And let's play this back and take a look. And we've got a nice jiggly motion. Now I can adjust my mass. Let's make that a bit heavier. And maybe do the adjust some of the spring constant so that it's smooth, a smoother motion. Now you can turn this blur effect off to turn it off, you just set it to zero. Uh, to turn it on would be one, or you can blend anywhere in between. And you can dial up this with this width. This stuff is more easily seen when you look at the, uh, see now you get something that looks really, really slow. Um, this is more easily seen in the motion effects view. So you to do that, you'd have to jump inside here and uh, basically point to which uh, chop you would want to see in your motion effects view. I think we can do that. Um, yeah, so just my out there. And if we hop back up to the, the root of this delay and we just start messing with um, any of these parameters, you can see that update in the motion effects view. Um, let's look back at our scene view. Yeah, so that that's basically, I just wanted to show a demo of, uh, of what this HDA would do. So you don't have to go through and set up any of this chop network, uh, this channel, uh, channel SOP, you don't have to build anything, just drop it down and you're good to go. And of course this also gets the, um, you, we, we see that this is getting all of the to rotation. So we're getting all of the attributes uh, that, that you add to, the, to your setup via the MOPS uh, modifiers. This works with color modifier as well, just, just as in the setup that I showed uh, earlier. Again, um, depending on what you're feeding in, if you're feeding in packed fragments, you'll need to unpack to see that. Uh, if you're not feeding in packed fragments, if you're using a, um, if you're using the like a mops instancer, then you won't have to you won't have to unpack. And this this viewport slowdown is uh, totally because of the the unpacking process. Uh, you can see that this was still running back pretty well. At the, I'm in a 24 frames a second project. This is running back around 18, which is pretty good performance. Uh, I'm also doing this screen record at, uh, at 2k. So yeah, this is, this is a pretty, pretty good setup. And uh, I hope that if you grab this, um, this HDA, that this is a, 
a speed boost for your workflow as well. So check that, definitely take the time to check that out. If you uh, use it a lot and want to help me out, you can feel free to, to drop a few bucks there. If not, you can just grab it for free. Uh, it's a, or, you know, again, it's a very easy setup. You can set this up yourself. Um, but I was happy to happy to find an even faster way to build this, happy to find a, a way that was even more straightforward that uh, I really think is more flexible as well. So um, yeah, thanks for checking this out. I really hope it's helpful for you. If you find this sort of content useful, uh, feel free to give me a follow on Twitter. I try, I'm pretty active on there. Uh, give me a subscribe on YouTube. I intend on putting out more content. I'm, and I'm also by by no means are the only videos that I hope to put out uh, chops based. It's just where I've been. That's where my head's been for the past couple months. Um, so I will be doing uh, more content in uh, different areas of Houdini as well. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it.